again and about time to and this time he's in the mood he's the fly wheel high with his tip back on with his pistols out he's one tough call he'll make you smile when he's in the but gremlins beware call him he's out welcome back to another episode of Cram School, this time featuring Diddy Kong. Arguably one of the best, if not the best characters in the game, Diddy is commonly a matchup everyone struggles with, both for their respective characters and player-wise. Once he gets going, a lot of the time it can feel like the only thing you're able to do is simply put your controller down and go along with the ride, but with a little direction you'll start to see the holes in his gameplay and how to abuse them. As this is my personal character of choice, I will make sure to remain as unbiased as I can and stay as concise as possible. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> At any point you are about to take damage from Diddy, if I were to ask you how you are about to get hit, you would probably be able to tell me the exact move. Whether you're airborne, sitting in shield, hanging on the ledge, or at kill percent for his famous down tilt up smash, Diddy's kit is extremely easy to anticipate, but because of how nimble he is, can be very difficult to deal with nonetheless. More times than not, the problem when fighting Diddy is not knowing what's coming. It's not knowing how to deal with a certain situation once you're presented with it. With that said, this is true for about any character in this game, but it's probably the most important aspect to understand if you want to have any chance of dealing with Diddy. If you're at a complete loss for how to deal with him and you lose to every single Diddy player you go up against, the most immediate and biggest thing you can change to probably give you the quickest success is being cognizant of what is about to be thrown your way. If you know he's going to monkey flip, back up and space accordingly. Does he have a banana? Expect him to throw it at you and prepare to maneuver around it. Is he fishing for down tilt up smash? Don't let go of shield until he's given you a reason not to. Increase your awareness and hone your anticipation of what Diddy will likely do next. If you know what's coming, then the only thing you'll have to learn is what your character has that can combat it. So we've talked about how being able to anticipate what Diddy will do next makes the matchup significantly easier to deal with, but many players either assume things incorrectly or just don't understand certain aspects of Diddy which prevent them from anticipating the correct options. These misconceptions have spread like crazy and it's gotten to the point where I've even second guessed myself on things that I know to be incorrect. So before we dive into dealing with these tools Diddy has, let's make sure we all accurately know what Diddy is and is not capable of doing. The first thing I hear all the time is that Diddy's side B kick is disjointed. It can barrel through projectiles, beat other attacks quite solidly that most hitbox can't, but it is not disjointed. The positioning of the hitbox is poked out in front and slightly below Diddy, making it collide with other hitboxes well before it hits Diddy's body. Moreover, if you were to zoom in on Diddy performing the move, you can see that his foot gets larger in a cartoony manner which is represented in the hitbox as well, as it's larger than his regularly sized foot. Because the hitbox is abnormally larger than its character model, a lot of people believe that it is disjointed. However, it is not. This is important because since it's not disjointed, this means punishing it is simply a matter of understanding where the hitbox is and how to avoid it while throwing out a move of your own. Diddy kicks out in front and slightly below his body, meaning the optimal locations to beat it are near the top of his body or near his rear, not his front. A lot of players try to combat it head on and end up getting beat out by the move because Diddy's foot hitbox reaches their hurtbox before their own attack can reach Diddy. The next thing is less of a misconception and more of just an unknown, which is that if Diddy uses an attack after latching onto an opponent with monkey flip, he loses the ability to not only use his upbeat, but every special move. This is important because this effectively removes the ability to be reverse your pop guns and pull bananas mid-air. A lot of the time, players will see Diddy use his kick and anticipate him using a pop gun reversal right after, even though there's no way for this to even happen in the first place. This leads me to the next aspect that is misunderstood about Diddy, his aerial deceleration. Have you ever noticed that every Diddy player changes their aerial momentum by using the pop gun reversal technique? A lot of other characters like Mewtwo and Ness simply hold the opposite direction to drift and change their trajectory, but Diddy's will always be reversed. This is because Diddy's aerial deceleration is zero. This means that if Diddy begins to move in one direction and then tries to press the other direction in the air, he will never reach a point where he will be able to turn around and change directions. 
This is pivotal because coupled with the previous statement where losing your ability to pop gun if you monkey flip, monkey hump attack, if you bait out the kick, Diddy will have no choice but to travel in a straight line as he cannot turn his direction around by holding the opposite direction. The last thing I want to clear up is the idea behind Diddy's fare. It is a monstrously good move, having a good hitbox and low recovery time. However, the idea that it is unpunishable on shield is one that I've heard from so many players and it's like almost a rule of thumb, but it's particularly a thing that low level players say a lot. Against already airborne opponents, Diddy's fair is absolutely amazing, but on whiff or block on grounded opponents, it is most definitely punishable, particularly through grabbing Diddy afterwards. If Diddy performs a rising short hop fair, he cannot perform another action until he hits the ground. This means that if he whiffs, Diddy is completely open to retaliation until he returns to the ground. He can't jump, he can't use another aerial, he can't air dodge or anything else until his body touches the ground. A lot of the time, the only thing you'll be able to get is a grab to punish it, but Many players let Diddy get away with spamming fear on a grounding opponent. A lot of Michigan players call it monkeying on somebody's shield where you just start spamming aerials and this is something that a lot of Diddy players get away with that I hear people complain about a lot. Throughout the rest of the video, keep these ideas in mind as we discuss dealing with Diddy. Be ready to assess what your specific character's best options are at accomplishing the task to deal with the main theme of each segment as we go on. Diddy owns this no matter how you look at it. With pretty much the most oppressive neutral game throughout the entire cast, this is the most difficult part of the matchup to deal with, without a doubt. If you ask any top player how to deal with Diddy in neutral, more often than not, they will simply tell you, don't. While this isn't necessarily wrong, telling players without a strong understanding of neutral in general will have this translate into avoid it altogether, which isn't what is meant. Diddy's neutral game consists of primarily banana, down tilt, grab, forward air, and monkey flip. With all these tools available, Diddy is without a doubt an overwhelming character, but for him to favor some of these options means losing others. The best way to explain how to deal with his neutral game is to break down each of his strong neutral tools and then just bring them all together and describe the overall playstyle needed. So let's just do that. So to start, I mentioned that avoiding neutral altogether isn't the optimal way to play. Many players will just jump around actively avoiding the ground as long as Diddy has a banana as if touching the ground means losing the game entirely. This playstyle wouldn't be bad if Diddy Kong's forward air didn't exist. On grounded opponents, fair can be punished very reliably, but on opponents there that are airborne, they lose the ability to shield, which will often get them frame trapped or just flat out beat out by the hitbox entirely. Forward air makes jumping a risky option since it is a very potent anti-air, but against grounded opponents, it's fairly unsafe to use. The most ideal method of dealing with forward air is to try to force a whiff by crawling right outside of Diddy's dash grab range or simply shield grabbing it altogether. If you space right outside of Diddy's dash grab range, you'll always be ready to react to dash grab with roll or spot dodge and be ready to whiff punish or shield Diddy's forward air. This way, you have all of your options available and he won't be able to machine gun forward airs while you're airborne trying to drift around him. The next thing to deal with is Monkey Flip. This is probably the aspect of the matchup that is dealt with the poorest among every level of play. Diddy has the unique ability to change his command grab into an attack at any point during his Monkey Flip, which inevitably tricks up a lot of players. Moreover, because of how large the hitbox is on his foot, it can be difficult to punish even if you predict which version of Monkey Flip he'll use. When dealing with Diddy in neutral, the most optimal way to punish Monkey Flip is to run to the end of it and put your punish there. When used on the ground, Diddy does not gain much vertical height and will normally have to end the move by crashing into the ground with a kick. By running to the end of it, you not only circumvent half having to deal with the kick, but you also avoid dealing with potentially the command grab as well. If you are caught in shield and have to deal with Monkey Flip, you can either roll in or spot dodge to avoid the move or you could simply hit Diddy with a quick aerial out of shield before the grab connects. Diddy's monkey flip doesn't actually grab until frame 20, meaning that for him to use the grab hitbox, he needs the space to get it going. If you're in shield, it's very likely that the Diddy player will attempt to do the grab hitbox, and if you're anticipating the monkey flip, it should be very easy to react to it with a quick out of shield option to prevent the grab. If you don't feel like you can put a hitbox fast enough to beat the grab, rolling or spot dodging is the next best option if you're caught in shield when he uses it. Make sure, however, that you roll inwards if you plan to roll since rolling outward will likely get you caught by the kick as he lands. 
This leads me to the next biggest factor that Diddy has going for him in neutral, the banana. Coupled with Diddy's amazing item toss frame data, with a good item game, it can single-handedly win a matchup for Diddy. This is also the primary reason many players tend to jump away from Diddy in the first place, being so that they avoid getting hit by it altogether. Diddy having a banana effectively removes his ability to use normals as they all get replaced by item tossing. Moreover, his aerials become the item toss animation as well. The best way to deal with Diddy having a banana is to stay spaced so you can react to whatever he does after throwing the banana. The most obvious method of not getting tripped by the banana is shielding it, but the real threat is Diddy being able to corral you into sections of the stage where you're forced to make a mistake and get hit by it. As long as you're prepared to avoid monkey flips, staying spaced for the banana follow-up is the best way to deal with banana. Another method of eliminating the threat of Diddy's banana is by destroying it with a hitbox. In my opinion, this is best to use as Diddy is pulling a banana in order to keep the game in a state where he doesn't have one. If you're going to jump away from Diddy when he has a banana, don't stay airborne around him for too long as it's easy for him to use a banana to confirm into an aerial as an easy anti-air. In short, the objective is to disarm Diddy and once he no longer has one, keep the situation as constant for as long as possible. Stay spaced so you can always react to his follow up option after the banana as well as monkey flip and don't be afraid of him having it so that way you don't get corralled into a situation where you're forced to make a mistake. At this range, you should also be able to run in and hit him if he tries to run and pull a banana without any clear advantage. Stay diligent and confidently use your shield to prevent him from tripping you. Lastly, down tilt and grab are his primary tools used to combat grounded opponents. These are relatively easy to deal with, however, since they are both very good options, it's hard to determine which one you need to cover. The best advice I can give on dealing with down tilt and grab in neutral is to just consider what percent you're at. At higher percent, it's much more likely Diddy will use down tilt in order to get down tilt up smash confirms, whereas at low percent, they will use grabs to rack up damage. Down tilt doesn't actually true combo into grab at earlier percents either, which is even more reasons why Diddy's will opt to prioritize using grabs at lower percents. Just the same, Diddy doesn't have a kill throw or reliable kill options out of grab past down tilt up smash percents making shield a pretty safe option at higher percents. Use your own percents to anticipate what Diddy players will do once they get in your face and act accordingly to severely hinder Diddy's punish game and kill power. Grab his down tilt after shielding and since grab is slower than standing grab, grab him for attempting to dash grab you. To put it all together into one statement on how to play neutral versus Diddy, if Diddy doesn't have a banana out, hover outside of his dash grab range and stay low with crawling if possible in order to be ready and react to dash grab and whip punish is fair. If he does have a banana, don't actively try to jump all over the place to avoid the ground and getting tripped. Don't be afraid of Diddy having a banana and look for an opportunity to disarm him. Space yourself whenever he throws a banana at you so that way you're still able to react to whatever he does next as it's more important to be wary of that than the banana itself. If he attempts a monkey flip, the ideal thing to do is to run to the end of it and punish it, but if you can't do that, rolling inwards and spot dodging it also avoids it. You can also stuff it with a quick out of shield option if you're confident he's going to use the grab hitbox. When dealing with down tilt and grab, use your own percent as a guide to determine what he's likely to go for and act from there. Diddy's recovery is linear, but it can be very hard to punish if you don't have the time to position yourself ahead of time. If Diddy gets hit out of barrels with a weak move, he will more than likely not end up being able to recover. Because of this, Monkey Flip is Diddy's best method of recovering in a lot of situations. The speed of it allows him to reach the stage quickly, and if he recovers high, he can use the kick to cover himself from a lot of attacks. When edgeguarding Diddy, this is the primary option you want to cover. Opt to cover monkey flips back to the ledge and keep swatting him back off stage until he char has to charge rocket barrels. Once he uses a B, he is in the most vulnerable state. If you don't have a weak aerial, you can also use strong hits with the intention of knocking Diddy off the side of the map. When he is knocked out of his barrels, Diddy almost takes twice as much knockback, making it easier to kill him off the side. With the control he has over his barrels, it won't be easy, but the better you get at edge guarding Diddy and forcing his barrels, the more success you'll have. There's never going to be a guaranteed flow chart in edge guarding him. There's never going to be a guaranteed flow chart in edge guarding Diddy's rocket barrels. Force the up B by hitting monkey flip and proceed to edge guard the rocket barrels. Remember to always be cognizant of them as they detach as well. If Diddy is near the stage when you hit hit him out of rocket barrels, they will likely curve into the stage and explode. It's very easy to lose stocks from this if you aren't prepared to DI or tech the explosion. <coughs> Being caught in a disadvantageous position versus Diddy usually means one of two things. 
you're either trapped at the ledge or you're getting landing trapped by a banana. The vortex Diddy creates can be infuriating and when you finally decide to calm down, you look at your percent and you're already at 100% from simply trying to bring the game back to a neutral state. Patience more than anything is going to be the biggest factor in reducing the damage you take from a disadvantageous position. When Diddy hits you with a bread and butter combo and you find yourself having to land, the important thing is to not land into Diddy for fear of being thrown back into the air. Many times players will fall at Diddy in order to prevent him from pulling out another banana, and more times than not, this just makes them take another throw combo. In most cases, landing on platforms or going to the ledge are the only options available that don't cause you to take additional damage, and although it's not ideal, it may be necessary. If you find yourself on the ledge, your goal is to make Diddy commit to something so you can get past his ledge trapping game without running into an aerial. Once he does, use that window to either jump past him, attack him away from the ledge, or just run to the center of the stage. Unless Diddy is directly over the ledge, down smash often won't hit characters that just hang there. So many times Diddy's strongest option to punish players that hang on the ledge is simply down tilt, which a lot of the time is just a minor inconvenience. The most important thing about escaping the ledge is to not be hasty and don't get frustrated. It's one of Diddy's most powerful positions he can be in and the more frustrated you get, the more likely he will guess right since you'll likely lose your patience. Diddy is a very straightforward character where strong fundamentals will help you win as the character and help you beat the character more than anything else. However, there are a few things you have to be wary of specifically with Diddy Kong, just like any other character in this game. For one, Diddy Kong's hoo-ha works at similar percents to his down tilt up smash, however rage affects the up throw heavily. Giving Diddy damage can ruin the window, where this confirm will work more than anything else. Secondly, don't mess up DIing Diddy's up smash if he crosses up your character when he's running after using down tilt. Always DI away from Diddy when getting hit by up smash and if he crosses you up while he's running, don't forget to change your DI to the other side to prevent yourself from dying earlier than you should be. Lastly, if Diddy Kong is knocked out of barrels and flies into the stage, he cannot be stage spiked. He enters a special fall state where he will just rub up against the stage unable to do anything until he's either hit out of the state or it wears off. Congratulations! So that about wraps it up. Would you believe me if I said this is the short version? I didn't expect the video to be this long, but I could sit here and talk about the nuances of Diddy's for over an hour, but doing that won't help you, nor should it. Practice makes perfect, and since Diddy is a very popular tournament character, you will all get plenty of that in this matchup. In the description, I'll link other Diddy Kong videos that help me along the way, as well as the Twitters of other prominent Diddy mains. As always, never stop learning. With Zero being the best overall player in this meta, and the rest of the Diddy mains aiming for the top as well, Diddy won't be going anywhere anytime soon. I can tell you that you guys will be seeing me right up there with him soon enough. The next video won't be a cram school since I pretty much made three in a row, but with that said, I am going to drop the cram schools more frequently. For other cram school videos or just more Smash content in general, check out the rest of my channel. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to stay up to date with my Smash career as well, you can follow me on Twitter. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.